All right, y'all, Lou here with Beyond the Bounds. This is a channel geared towards kayaking, bass fishing, and gear reviews. So if you like that sort of a thing, click that subscribe button up top. Make sure you hit that bell so that you receive notifications when I release a new video. Today's video is going to be a recap of my recent Delaware Paddle Sports kayak fishing tournament, and that's coming up. Okay, so the weather for this tournament was a pretty nice day. I mean, we had uh, overcast skies, definitely cloudy, you know, spots of uh, good sun here and there. And the place that we fished is just, it's beautiful. It's my favorite place uh, thus far on the planet to fish. Um, it's got some really good fish in there. Some, some of the guys caught a, a 21 incher, some 19s were caught. Um, so it's a good place to fish. It's a place that, uh, you know your bass boats and things like that just can't launch at um, small john boats anything that can be lifted can be fished there so it's a perfect place it's like it's almost like a kayak only place but weather wise great weather um, we probably had mid 70s to lower 80s uh, water temp i'm gonna guess was in the uh, mid mid 70s mid to low 70s probably actually felt really actually kind of felt cool so probably low 70s so you know this place is is really kind of one of uh, you see it you fish it kind of thing it's very much a a visual you've got trees and you know fish are going to relate to wood and this place is just covered in wood um so uh, i started off the morning kind of with a a thought and it was kind of like a you know what what i'm going to do is just make concentric circles just circles that get you know that start wide and then get smaller um and so that that had me i generally in these ponds and things i will stay towards the deeper ends of the ponds now fish will be at the backs of the creeks during specific times but in these pond type atmospheres i find that the bigger fish and better fish tend to hold in a certain area no matter what time of the year it is um, vegetation plays into that a ton and that's dependent on the the water that i'm in this one doesn't have a lot of like lily pads and things like that so they don't have that vegetation like they would in other places and other ponds especially in delaware so i tend to hang closer to the is the deepest water that i can find um, and so that was my plan was to make these circles just kind of hitting the structure and kind of working my way in, kind of like a buzzard. You know, a buzzard starts off really wide and then just gets smaller, smaller, and smaller. Um, and I'm telling you, within the first couple minutes of, of casting topwater, I caught a fish. It was on a Livingston uh, walking boss. It's a pretty great walking lure. I really like fishing it. Um, and so I was like, man, this is this is it. This is it's working already. And I tell you, I mean, it probably another couple hours before I even hooked into the next fish. You know, I, I kept trying to throw the, because again, it, it worked so quick, right out of the gate, boom, got hit on it. And, and I stuck with that pattern for a little while and then just didn't catch anything. Switched over to a uh, black and blue chatter, actually even threw a, a frog uh, during those times, a white frog, Stanley top toed. Um, and I did that because if I got hit on a white walking bait, I you could get hit on a white frog. And plus I could get that frog up into uh, tighter spots because there's so many overhangs, there's so many things you can get hung up on, you know, throwing a, uh, a trebled hook bait like that all the time into thick stuff just isn't uh, what you want to do. So anyway, moving on to that, let's see, you know, as the day progressed, I, 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 I kind of got disheartened, you know, you, you started seeing a lot of other people catch it and I saw that they were catching on trees. And so, you know, I knew that they were catching towards the, the center of the circles that I had defined. And so, you know, I constricted myself a little bit more into the center circles and was still throwing stuff, you know, top water and, um, and then I, you know, switched over to the jig because the jig's my favorite thing to throw because I just love throwing a jig. I love hook setting a jig. That's probably my favorite thing in fishing is just jacking that fish up. But, you know, it, uh, it, it became clear pretty quick that they weren't hitting the jig. And I was putting that jig in so many of the same places, like the hardest places you could, you could throw into. I'm getting my jig in there, skipping it in there. Um, Again, that's just part of what I love fishing a jig, fishing the new tech jigs. They skip really easily. 
get in, get in those tight spaces. The new tech jigs actually get hung up a little bit more in the, in the trees and stuff. So they don't come through that cover as, as good, but you know what? I will take losing five jigs over knowing that I got that one hook set and that fish stayed pegged because that new tech jig jacked it in the top of the mouth. And you're going to get those 95% of the time, um, with a new tech jig, no matter which way you set the hook. So that's why I fish those again, not my sponsor, my favorite jigs. And I challenge you to go out there and try one and see if you don't get a better hookup. Um, so, you know, the day progressed on, I didn't really catch, wasn't catching fish, lost a pickerel. I did end up catching one on the jig. And I think that that was that fish that just for lack of a better word, screwed me. Um, cause you know, that, that, one fish he he solidified that hey you know the jig will work and that was wrong because the jig would not work and you know matter of fact let's look at some video real fast of me throwing the jig and then throwing the cinco because these fish wanted the cinco they wanted a wacky rig cinco and i will admit that i've got a just a uh, stigma against the wacky rig cinco um it's it's just one of those like do nothing baits um, to where it's like, it doesn't matter if you're a two year old fishing from the bank, you can catch something with a wacky rig Cinco and it's just, just, ah, it irritates me. But you know, let's check. <laughs> That's a lesson learned by the way. So look at, look at this video real fast. So this is me fishing the jig, right? And I'm fishing the jig and I'm throwing this jig up under this tree and, uh, which is bad cause I just already just caught a fish on the Cinco. Um, on a wacky rig Cinco after not having caught things for hours, I catch a fish on the Cinco and I knew other people caught fish on the Cinco and did well. And here I am, I'm throwing this jig up under there. I make three identical casts with this jig. All right. I put one to the left, one to the middle, and then one to the right. Then I drop that rod. I pick up my Cinco rod and fire it in there and do the almost exact same three casts. And on the sixth cast, I catch a fish with a Cinco. I mean, I didn't put it down the rest of the day after that. I just kept throwing it. But the problem was, was it was already too late in the day, guys. You know, I knew in the morning, like I even told myself in the morning during this event, I was like, hmm, maybe they'll want a slower rate fall on something. Maybe this is just falling too fast. They just don't want it. Seem to want what I'm throwing at them. I may need a slower drop presentation right now. And I know it was already working with some other people, but yet because I have this um, dumb feeling, I don't even know what to call it, uh, uh, a reservation. Let's put it that way. I have a reservation because it's a do nothing bait that I don't want to throw it. I'm too good to throw it. You know what? Dummy. Just dummy stupid this guy yes yes people in the comments when you're calling me stupid i'm gonna be like yeah yeah you're right you're right this is bass fishing if they're biting on a little tiny crappie jig you throw that crappie jig if they're biting on a cinco and it's wacky rig you throw that wacky rig all right so that's my lesson learned for this one is that you know <laughs> you got to give the fish what they want i knew it so early on and because i I, I was just above that. I was above throwing it. And that's just stupid. That is, oh, you know, I look back at it and I'm smiling because I love learning these lessons. Some of the lessons that you learn are hard learned. They cost money. Um, you lose money, you lose place, it, whatever. You know, that's some of the best lessons in life are the ones that stick with you because you learned them. And that's kind of my lessons learned for this. You know, I, I don't really have too much like my other ones about boat positioning and so forth because, you know, you see it, you fish it in this pond. What you see is what you get. I wasn't getting too much on moving baits, but you know, hey, I got a good lesson learned out of it. I got to fish my favorite place. Um, got to get out there, hang with people who love kayak fishing and experience that. And, and that's what it's all about. So guys, you know, this is my recap. This is my lessons learned. The base that I threw, what worked, the tournament took place at the end of May. Uh, 2017. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Y'all have a good one.